Welcome to So You Think You Can Stream, also known as Stream Critique, because naming a series is not something that I'm apparently very capable of and I can't stay decided on one series. I've talked a lot on my channel about how to live stream, how to get the best out of your gear for live streaming, your setups, things like that. I'm using a ridiculous camera card setup thanks to DSLR Video Shooter right now. But I receive a lot of comments asking for ways to improve your live stream in ways that don't involve buying more gear or having the best hardware, you know, not focus so much on the physical aspect so much as the practical and, you know, application aspect. And that's something I care a lot about. It's easy to get wrapped up in which microphone is best or which camera is best or, you know, which hardware should you be streaming on when you should really be focused on the actual practice of streaming, how to improve your live stream. And that's what I'm going to attempt to provide here in a format that I have been requested to do a bajillion times and I've been wanting to do for a while. And I think we're finally at the point where it makes sense to do this format. And so this is Stream Critique. This new show, Stream Critique, is sponsored by Owned. Owned is the best place to get all of your live stream graphics, assets, and they can even help you build websites. Really a lot of stuff going on here, and we're going to talk about them later in the video because they are a key sponsor of the show to make it happen. And they're really going to help you, you know, revamp your branding or live stream if that's what you're into as well. So go check them out in the link in the description or at eposfox.gg slash own3d. But again, we'll be, we'll be covering them a little bit later on in the show. So the stream critique format will focus on two channels per episode, at least to start. And what I will be going through is I have watched their live streams, I've tried to catch them live, I've went through some of their VODs, their clips, and I've gone ahead and analyzed not just their, you know, image quality, I'm going to focus some a little bit on your OBS settings, optimizing your live streaming format, but also some of the practical stuff of how they're presenting to their audience, how their cameras are set up and laid out, you know, lighting techniques, audio techniques, things like that. And I'm pretty excited to share this with you guys. So we're going to be starting off with one of the streamers in our Discord, Diamond Rice, who was one of the first people I was able to get applied to this live show. Obviously for the first couple episodes, we're going to be on a first come first serve basis just to get this rolling. And I will have, uh, moving forward, a form where you can apply to get, you know, the, in a sense, this is getting featured, but the point is to give generally applicable advice, which will both improve your specific live stream, but also help the viewers improve their live streams or their live streaming formatting as well. And so I will have a form where you can apply for that in the description down below. So both of our streamers today do stream on Twitch. However, I am not limiting this coverage to Twitch specific streamers at all. I will be covering you know, Mixer streamers, Facebook streamers, YouTube streamers, anybody that wants to, you know, that I see I can help improve their streaming setup that will be an option, but it just happens that this episode is primarily Twitch streamers. Just Wait, what the- what? <laughs> what? Do you believe in reincarnation, John Martin? What happened? No. So Diamond Rice is gaming on a Ryzen 3700X and a RTX 2060 in his gaming PC. His streaming PC is a Ryzen 5 1400 with a GTX 1050. He has a Samsung Q2U microphone, an Elgato HD60S capture card, a Behringer UM2 audio interface, and then uses voice meter to help, you know, process his audio live and to balance it between his two PCs. However, I don't think anymore that a dual PC setup is in his best interest, and we'll cover that later on in his critique here. Pulling up some of his streams and feeds and things like that, overall his stream looks and sounds pretty good. Uh, the quality does get a little bit crunchy at various points. He is only streaming at 3 megabits per second. 3K is not a whole lot of bitrate to work with, especially for game streaming and especially for some of the faster paced games that he streams or the more detail oriented ones, like all the fo foliage and things like that and grass in his Red Dead Redemption 2 streams. And he's only streaming at X264 faster. So dipping that down lower than faster would be ideal to use that bitrate or increasing the bitrate if you have enough you know, internet bandwidth. I think we're really at a point with transcoding being readily available, especially with people with virtually any following and with devices where really you're more limited in the resolution and frame rate that you're streaming to in terms of what, say, like mobile viewers might be able to play back rather than the bit rate itself. And I really want to see people kicking up more of the higher bit rate stuff these days if they have the option available to them. However, if you don't, you know, if you're stuck with that bitrate, which a lot of streamers are, and actually both of our streamers today are streaming sub Twitch's capped bitrate, that is where the slower X264 presets or higher quality encoding options become available. We're going to get to tweaking that in just a moment. I did want to note that his webcam looks good, but it appears to be mirrored. 
And overall, this might not be a problem other than some awkwardness with your hand motion seeming kind of backwards or whatever. But in one of the stream VODs I was watching, he had a shirt that said Twitch on it. And it was backwards because his camera was mirrored. And I was really confused by this. I was like, why would you mirror your camera? Maybe that was a mistake. But I see what he's doing there. He has a green screen setup and he has his microphone arm coming into the frame for his microphone. And you can see the arm kind of gets cut off by his webcam framing. And that would be kind of awkward having it getting awkwardly cut off in the middle of the camera feed. Or, you know, in the middle of your gameplay there on one side. So he mirrored it so it's just going out of frame. However, his green screen lighting isn't the best. It's, it's not bad. It's better than a lot of people's. But it isn't the best. And in some scenes you can see a whole lot of gnarly shadows in the bottom left corner of his webcam feed where the darker part of it is not fully lit and it's just turning into black crunchiness which is hurting his encoding quality and also just looks a little jank. So what I think he could really do is leave it unmirrored and then move it over to the left side of the frame and just make a little bit of mass to crop that off or improve your lighting. You need a little bit more cleaner lighting on your backdrop, especially towards the bottom. That's something everyone forgets is they just want directly around your face, but your screen itself actually needs lit and it needs lit all top and bottom, every part that's going to be in the frame. There's actually a really cool technique that is generally considered required for green screen lighting that is actually covered in this Captain Disillusion video where your green screen actually needs to be lit with a different color temperature light than what your subject is shot with. And a lot of green screens are actually tuned for specific color temperatures of lighting. So for example, the lighting that is on me right now is considered daylight lighting. So it's 5600 Kelvin. But a lot of green screens are made for the green screens themselves to be lit with tungsten lighting, which is 3200 Kelvin. That's the more yellowy looking light. And so you actually want to light your green screen with that yellowish lighting because that's what the green screen's made to reflect and then light your subject with your daylight lighting and set your white balance accordingly and that will make your green screen stand out even more. That's the light it's meant to reflect and absorb the right way. And any spillback of that more yellow lighting will actually create a bit of a rim light on your subject to help keep the green from bouncing onto your subject and like cutting off your shoulders or your hair or something and make you stand out from the background a little bit more cleanly. So something to look into if people are looking to optimize setups, I'll put the link to the Captain Dish Illusion video in the description below. Overall, his layout and UI is clean. It's fairly minimal. I like it overall. However, he clearly changed graphics packages recently because his uh, logo and offline screen and things like that do not match the branding of the on-screen graphics. And that can create a lot of weird viewer confusion. You want to keep that all matched and up to date. Remember to go back and change your actual Twitch settings as well. Uh, but overall, it's fairly, you know, it's it's pretty good. I like it. I did notice a couple situations where he introduced an on-screen chat overlay, a chat window source, onto his gameplay, except he has it set to be cleared really, really quickly. And this is a common mistake that actually both streamers face in today's episode, in that they have the, the chat box set to clear out really, really quickly. And when you don't have a super pop and active chat, this means that your chat messages go away really quickly and you just have this awkward like gray box in the top right hand corner of the video feed that just looks like something's wrong with your gameplay feed. Doesn't look right when really you should leave chat messages to just stay on it infinitely because if it just pops up one every now and then it kind of shows to your viewer that you don't even have an active chat in the first place especially if they're going to look back at clips and things like that. Like they want to see that chat or not see it at all. Don't just have it like halfway there if that makes any sense. I did notice specifically with his Red Dead Redemption 2 gameplay, which would have been from, I think, the PS4, but I could be mistaken. Uh, a lot of the, what I would expect to be, I haven't actually played the game a whole lot my, or at all myself, so I don't know exactly for sure, but a lot would have what I would expect to be solid black from that game, be it backgrounds of text screens or tra transitions where it cuts to black or just in general, look pretty bright gray, you know, dark gray instead of solid black, which says to me you might have your limited versus full RGB ranges between your console and your capture card and OBS settings mismatched somewhere, and that's kind of washing out your colors a little bit. And instead of trying to compensate for this in OBS, you need to actually go back and match those levels. Overall, the gameplay quality is pretty fluid, smooth. I didn't notice any major frame rate issues, just occasional quality fluctuations. Uh, Audio-wise, his audio sounds pretty good. Again, it's the Q2U, great microphone. I talk about it way too much on this channel. Great microphone overall. I do feel like it runs a little hot sometimes and ends up clipping a little bit and running just a little too on the peaking and distorting level. I would turn down your initial gain set a little bit because it, it's running a little too hot. And please, 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 
introduce a de-esser into your audio processing chain. I don't know if voice meter specifically supports it. I don't use voice meter. I haven't covered it. I don't know, but if voice meter doesn't support it, then you need to add it as a filter in OBS if possible, be it with VSTs or if it's natively supported. Uh, I will play a clip now. I've never really been able to explain to people why a de-esser is important until having this kind of clip as an example. I'm gonna slice by these skinners in one shot again, Let's or go. one slice, not one shot. That harsh S sound is called sibilance, and that is what happens when your S's, the frequency of your S's are picked up too harshly, and then especially when they're post-processed with compression or something, they just become really harsh and piercing on the ears, and it's really undesirable. And it's possible he has a de-esser in his chain, but it's not set to the right frequency, because basically you just kind of identify a little frequency range that your voice's S's actually come through at, and that is what it filters out and kind of reduces. So please implement that. Lastly, I wanted to talk about his two PC versus one PC setup. Currently, he's running X264 at faster CPU usage preset with a very low bitrate, when he could benefit significantly by either lowering the CPU usage preset to fast or medium, or by raising the bitrate. If you can't raise the bitrate, then the usage preset needs to go down. If he can't do that on his current system, I'm not really certain that at this point a dual, C your dual PC setup is beneficial. Now, he was probably doing that to avoid the GPU allocation issues because this is a very recent fix and a lot of people have told me this. But now that, if you, if you missed it, the GPU prioritization, which is why a lot of people switch to two PC setups in that OBS's frame rate would fluctuate based on your game's graphics card usage, that has now been fixed. If you run OBS as admin in version 24.0.3, I have a whole video on that linked in the video description. If that was the only you know thing in your way, I would actually go back, recommend going back to a single PC setup, reduce your audio you know signal complexity as well, and then use either X264 on your 3700X, which is more than capable of streaming on most CPU usage presets as I covered in my benchmarking and review of that processor linked in the description below. Or you have a Turing RTX graphics card in there, which has a GPU encoding equivalent to fast or medium on X264 usage presets. So basically anything you could do on your single PC would be better quality than your dual PC setup. And so I might recommend migrating back. That's actually what I'm in the pro process of doing right now myself. So maybe do that. I also noticed when Diamond Rice was streaming certain games that he had multiple frame rate indicators up. One would be uh, the Shadow Play frame rate indicator, and then I believe one was like Steam's frame rate indicator, and it has the Shadow Play logo and the frame rate and a frame rate up here, and all of those are frequently changing tiny little text details in your video feed, which actually make your encoding process harder and lower quality than it needs to be, because your, your encoder is trying to compensate for all those little changes for elements that may otherwise stay static. So I understand wanting them on for various reasons, but when you're streaming, I would actually recommend turning all of that off. It will help smooth out a lot of stuff. I also wanted to cover that Rice is using stream elements chat commands to have, you know, specs and things like that easily accessible in the chat for his viewers, which is always really cool to see, and then using a free program or a service called Pretzel Music for getting stream safe music into his stream as well, which integrates with his stream UI and his chat commands and things like that, which is pretty cool to see. I have a video where I mention that soon because Pretzel's actually a pretty neat service. So that is our first contestant. We're not actually, you know, this is not so you think you can stream. We're not actually like competing with people, but I just want, you know, I want to present people's streams, showcase people who are actually making the effort of live streaming regularly and wanting to, you know, improve their streaming process, get them in front of more eyes, while also showing you how they can improve both for their benefit and for yours, because a lot of people are in similar situations and you're going to see similar messaging between each of our, you know, people that I cover because you know, there's common issues that everyone encounters that I think it would be beneficial to cover. Before we move on to our next person, this was Diamond Rice. We're going to be moving on to another streamer for this episode. I wanted to talk a little bit more about our sponsor, Owned. Stream Critique is brought to you by Owned. Owned provides everything you need to build your streaming brand. From individual stream assets and overlays to full revamp packages covering not just your stream, but your YouTube channel and social media as well, custom avatars and more. They can even set you up with a full website for your brand with matching graphics, web hosting, setup, a free subdomain, and regular backups. Heck, they can even provide desktop wallpapers to match your brand so that your branding whenever your screen is shown is always on point as well. Check out Owned over at epostvox.gg slash own3d or the link in the video description and check out their Halloween sale to save any more. Thanks to Owned for sponsoring Stream Critique. Rip. Nice! Nice! Jesus. Nice job, guys. That was clutch. Our second streamer for this show is Phoenix Uni. He streams games like League of Legends, PUBG, and so on, and has a kind of checkered history of not having streamed all month. Where have you been? 
<laughs> in fact, I think he might have actually been waiting on this show to go live before continuing streaming because he just recently switched over his stream graphics and had revamped a little bit of his setup in anticipation of getting some feedback on how he should do things. And then the show got delayed an entire month and he hasn't streamed all month. So I think I may be to blame for his lack of consistency, but you should not be waiting on me to live stream. Where's your streams at, boy? So Phoenix Uni is streaming on a Radeon 3600. Great CPU, another one I recommended and, stream and covered for my streaming guides and things like that. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM, a GTX 1060, and then an Elgato HD60 for Switch and PlayStation 4, and then a Firewire-based audio card. Nice. Looks like he's using a Shure SM58. He didn't actually tell me, but uh, that looks like where the microphone is. Good mic. I've yet to be able to cover it. I've never gotten my hands on it, but it's a great mic. Overall, he's got a nice layout, nice starting soon screen, uh, you know, nice little animated stinger transitions, text overlays on a starting screen, soon screen with stream labels for his most recent follower, tips, song playing, social media links, things like that. Great consistent branding package, and it features the stream schedule on his starting soon screen, which I really like to see. However, his Twitch panels below his stream are super minimal and don't really contain much information, whereas Diamond Rice's were still super minimal but can still had a little bit of about section of, hey, this is what I'm about, this is who I am, these are rules, these are what you can expect from my live stream. Phoenix Uni doesn't seem to have much of that. I would recommend adding a little bit more text to your profile, especially with the new Twitch profiles coming. You're going to want some of that information of, hey, this is who I am and why you should be interested in my stream. They are streaming with Streamlabs OBS instead of normal OBS Studio, which is fine to each their own. That's also how they're probably able to get such a nice layout so easily set up. And they're streaming at 3.5 megabits per second. I've always struggled to get that number out of there because people measure it in K even though it's megabits per second. And the UI has confused people 3.5 megabits per second or 3500 in the bitrate box, which is again, not Twitch's cap. I don't know what their upload speed looks at, but I would recommend everybody pretty much pushing towards six as much as possible or eight if you want to really push the boundaries and, you know, take that risk, which has worked out for all of my streams so far, but I don't necessarily recommend everybody doing that. Uh, but it actually ends up looking nice, especially with games that they play such as League of Legends. Uh, the screen adapts in a way, you know, the screen is so slow moving compared to other games since it's not a first person game that his gameplay quality actually looks pretty nice, despite the fact that that's on a very fast X264 preset. I was actually very impressed with the stream quality here, all things considered. It could always look way better with higher bitrate or slower settings. On the 3600 though, I believe League is kind of more of a CPU oriented game and you want to not have any super performance hitches. So leaving it on very fast is probably just kind of like a safeguard to make sure that his stream settings always stay rock solid, which I can respect and is fine and is still the way to go over, say, his 1050s NVENC, or 1060s NVENC. 1060 still has great NVENC, but X264 is able to compete a little better with it here, and his stream looks fine either way. Audio quality is pretty good. I would recommend tweaking the processing a little bit. I don't know what his signal chain looks like. Uh, the, the microphone doesn't sound bad by any stretch. There are a lot of microphones that you hear on streams and things like that where the audio quality is just confusingly bad. Nothing like this here so much as... I just, it, it doesn't feel super inspired. Like, I don't feel like there's anything too great about it. It just sounds okay. It sounds normal. SM58 can sound pretty good, but not everybody wants a super over-stylized, over-processed stream sound. And if their, their stream style, their, like, presentation style and stuff seems to just kind of be playing league with his buddies and, you know, chatting and talking about the game and things like that. And you don't necessarily want, like, a big, punchy radio announcer or... Uh, a nice soothing podcast sound or wh whatever that people are going for on a lot of streams. And so if that's, you know, this, if that's stylistically what you want, by all means, go ahead. Uh, like put me back in the game. Yeah, it did for me too. It's like reconnect. And I'm like, no. Yeah, I just wait. You have to wait like yeah, I had to 30 wait seconds. Longer, but, but, then it... but now I have a black screen. Alt F4 out of it. Yeah, I just did. Unable to reconnect. Cancel. Okay, there we Boom. go. So while I did say his layout and overall, you know, UI on stream looked pretty good, I did notice that his alerts were not at all matching his stream layout, and that was super weird and disorienting, and I always recommend people making make sure things match, like I talked about with the previous streamer, and it looked like his stream chat bo box that was on screen and had its own dedicated section wasn't working at all. And so I would, I would look into that, because again, it looks kind of weird to have a full stream with an empty chat, and I even like like went the specific time codes where people were chatting and nothing was showing up on screen. So I would look into that. Camera wise, it looks like he's using a webcam. It actually looks pretty decent. His lighting is actually pretty solid. Despite the fact that he's wearing a hat, 
his lighting actually ends up looking pretty solid on his face. I've got no major complaints there, but the webcam does have autofocus enabling and it pulses quite regularly, which also, you know, hurts video compression, uh, but also just is disorienting for the viewer a little bit. So I would recommend, I would definitely recommend kicking that into manual focus because with the way that you're positioned at your desk and stuff, you're never moving a significant amount, especially with a webcam to really need autofocus enabled for something like that. So I would kick it into manual focus, get you a good manual focus position and leave it there and it's gonna look a lot more solid. There was, however, one rule of photography and videography that I wanted to point out with his stream that a lot of people have now learned when it comes to camera work and editing and things like that that is kind of a fundamental basic but something that is easy to overlook and I think would really help improve a lot of people's streams. You see, when he cuts to his gameplay view, he has his camera with a frame and things like that nicely integrated into his game's UI, which is pretty cool. I always love seeing layouts like that. There used to be a ton of StarCraft custom layouts which would mask over the actual game UI elements and things like that. I always like seeing, you know, integrating cleanly around your game's UI instead of slapping it over top. It's good to go there. But he has it set up so that he's looking off of the right side of the screen and it's on the right side of the screen. So it's positioned in the bottom right hand corner looking out of frame and that's always considered a big no-no for videography you want people your subject looking into the frame i wouldn't suggest mirroring it here but simply moving it to the other side you have an equal size gap on the other side of the ui move it over there so that he's looking from left to right across the frame instead of completely out of the image because that what that does since viewers tend to connect with human faces and then they follow the human eye line is they are going to naturally kind of get distracted looking where the cre where the player is looking and he's actually angled in the camera and then looking off screen which then kind of directs people off screen which directs people to your chat which is you know okay i guess but that's not actually what you want to happen you want them being directed between your face and your gameplay so i, su I would suggest moving that over also your background is not Super inspired. I understand that you're working with the space that you got. You've got a door in the background and things like that. I might suggest hanging, you know, some posters or some string lights on the wall back there just to give it a little bit of character. Um, but also just crop off the face cam a bit when you're in your gameplay mode. It's fine when you're in just chatting mode to have the full wide frame. But when you're just in gameplay, we don't need that extra width on both sides to show your door and your empty desk on the other side. That doesn't add anything to the experience, especially with how empty it is. That doesn't really show any more personality to your viewers. And it would benefit everybody if you just made it like a little 4x3 or 1x1 one one crop of just you. Move it over to the left adjust your frame accordingly and you'd be good to go. I do believe if it's Streamlabs OBS, he might be using a pre-made layout that he may not have that flexibility, but those are still my general recommendations as those are kind of key principles when it comes to like interviewee and human subject style of video positioning and composition. Overall, I was surprised that Phoenix Uni's audio balance was actually really, really well. It, it can be difficult to get party chat and game sound and your microphone balanced evenly in a live stream. And his audio balance was actually really, really good. He had a couple buddies in Discord or something chatting while they were playing League of Legends along with him. Everything was balanced nice and neat, so kudos there. And that wraps up this episode of Stream Critique. We featured Diamond Rice and Phoenix Uni with similar problems that they both struggled with that could see similar, you know, solutions to tackle them, but also a couple unique problems per stream that I think everybody can learn from as they're issues that I see, you know, commonly shown through a lot of different live streams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Stream Critique. This is a new show. I am piloting in here and I'm hoping to have it recurring every other week. Currently, this is uh, being filmed on the same week as a streamer news episode, but my goal is to have this alternate with streamer news being every other week, but we'll see how that goes here. Just let me know what you think. I am open to all f feedback about the format, about the presentation, about the content, about the idea itself in the comment section down below. While you're down there, hit the like button. Go check out our sponsor owned at eposvox.gg slash own3d. They are super fundamental in making this entire series possible so go check them out and get you else you get yourself some stream assets or a full website if you want pretty awesome stuff over there and they are having a halloween sale going on right now so go check that out uh yeah go check out diamond rice and phoenix uni their twitch links will be in the description below as well hit the like button as i already said subscribe for more tech education and stream guides i'm eagles vox i'll see you next time <laughs>